These nations are amongst the few in the world that no longer exist on our maps. The 20th century saw numerous nations either disintegrate into many or many amalgamate into one. It was either a war that ended their existence or a full collapse of a much larger system and nation into smaller pieces, hence ending their presence in our memories. But there are two instances when a nation was erased in total, wiped out from existence, when a people were displaced and an identity erased. One of them was Palestine, and the other? Since the fall of the Ottoman Empire, and in association with the clandestine planning of the French and British, the Sykes-Picot Agreement resulted in the creation of many modern nations, Turkey, Syria, Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon, and Palestine. But in that same moment in history, one nation in the region completely disappeared and has since been forgotten, Arabistan. Arabistan was an autonomous nation from 1612 to 1925. Located at the northern tip of the Arabian Gulf, the emirate was established by Sunni Arab tribes that had emigrated from the Arabian Peninsula in the 15th century. For centuries, this nation was caught in the middle of a power struggle between two exponentially stronger yet competing empires, the Ottoman Empire to the west and the Qajar dynasty of Persia to the east. In the mid-17th century, the emirate would see its prosperity skyrocket as it established itself as the leading and most powerful seafaring nation in the Arabian Gulf. For this part of West Asia, going through Arabistan was a necessity for any import or export. Over the many years, several sheikhs and their families ruled Arabistan, but in the early 19th century, the leadership of this nation was taken over by the Bani Ka'b tribe. This tribe, over the centuries, had built the city of al muhammara located at the mouth of the river Karun on the Shat al-Arab, and with their rule came their relocation of its capital from al falahiya to al muhammara Further prosperity and complication ensued, and due to its strategic and commercially advantageous location and its noticeable enrichment, Ottomans and Persians began a long rivalry for its control. What was so special about the Sheikhdom? Why did the Ottomans and the Persians covet such a prized possession? Location, location, location. Being on one edge of the Shat al-Arab gave major control of access to the Arabian Gulf and into the depths of Iraq. Arabistan's geography also included the confluence of many rivers beyond the Tigris and Euphrates that stretched deep into the heartland of Iran, thereby administering the flow of ships and goods. This meant that Arabistan, as the gatekeeper and due to its unparalleled location, had the ability to levy taxation on all local and international trade coming into and out of Iraq and Iran. Another key advantage of Arabistan's geography was the fact that Western nations like the British, Russians, and Germans all recognized its logistical superiority as it had safe harbor, sweet water availability, deep waters, and great potential for the construction of a full shipping port. And finally, in 1908, oil was discovered in Arabistan, the first in the petroleum-rich region of the Arabian subcontinent. The Darcy Oil Company, through an illegal concession wrongfully granted in 1901 by Shah Mudaffar al-Din, the Qajar Shah of Persia, made the discovery of commercially viable oil reserves. The strategic value of Arabistan now multiplied in the eyes of many imperialist nations. As a matter of fact, the supplies of oil in what was the Arabistan region would eventually make up to 87% of all modern Iranian petroleum exports. Darcy Oil Company would become Burma Oil Company, that would then be renamed the Anglo-Persian Oil Company, and finally, British Petroleum. Please subscribe to our channel, as it would support us greatly in generating more content that documents our Arabian and Muslim heritage, history, and culture. Now back to our story. When World War I came about, a major fear crept into Western allies. This fear was how Germany, along with the Ottomans, could lure Arabistan and gain their allegiance, thereby putting the entire Middle Eastern Front and Western allies at a great military and logistical disadvantage. In order to alleviate such fears, the British called on Sheikh Khazal ibn Jabir, the Emir of Arabistan, to assure them of Arabistan's affiliation with the British and in turn, the British made the necessary pact and promises to protect Arabistan from any foreign interventions, current or future. Khazal agreed, and Arabistan's future security was now guaranteed. When wars start, allies are made. And when wars end, allies are abandoned. And after World War I, the British abandoned Khazal and Arabistan. There were no more Germans, and the Russians were caught up with their own internal revolutions. The Qajar dynasty had just ended with the rise of Pahlavi Iran. Reza Shah, the new ruler of Iran, eyed unifying all what he considered as Persian lands into a single nation, and he considered Arabistan vital to this one goal. 
A single obstacle for him, though, was this agreement the British were committed to in protecting Arabistan. Or were they? The British, now recognizing the changing dynamic of the region, contemplated stepping away from their obligations in defending Arabistan. After covert negotiations with Rida Shah, the British wanted the necessary guarantees on their existing commercial concessions, while at the same time, cash in on the larger potential that Iran had to offer for oil exploration and trade. Sold for bigger Iranian promises and interests, the British conveyed to Ghazal that no more military support will be granted in Arabistan. And within months, Arabistan vanishes and becomes the Khuzestan province of modern Iran. Arabistan is and has been no more. Destroyed, depopulated from Iranian Arabs and overwhelmed by strategically planned Persian immigration. Amalgamated into the Persian domain. No Arab culture remains. No Arab identity accepted. Only the struggle of Iranian Arabs under a regime who deems them as second-class citizens. Will Arabistan rise again? We'll never know. But at the very least, it should always be remembered.